Hello, St. Mary's, and welcome back to another installment of Here Are All the Things I Wanted to Say Yesterday in My Sermon That I Couldn't Say. I did mention yesterday about contemplative prayer, and I wanted to say a deeper word about that in this space. We said yesterday that Jesus is far above all rulers, all authorities, and all powers. That's the message of the Ascension, and that Jesus is bringing that kingdom of love, mercy, and reconciliation to bear. We said that the church gets to participate in that, and in the Lord's Prayer, we express our desire for that to happen. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. But if everything is under the authority of Christ, what it means for us is that there is nothing of spiritual inconsequence. If Christ is Lord of all, then everything has meaning for our soul and for our relationship with God. And so consider, our whole lives are a swirl of spiritual formation. Spiritual realities are unfolding in our hearts and minds, on our screens, in our families and friends, on ball fields and in sanctuaries, restaurants and hiking trails, literally everywhere. Our lives are awash in spiritual consequence. But not all of it will lead us to Christ. Just labeling something spiritual doesn't necessarily make it healthy or good. And just because something happens under the umbrella of church doesn't make it transformative. Spiritual things can just be projections of what we already are, rather than what we seek to become. Author and pastor Rich Velotis put it this way. He said, whether we know it or not, see it or not, or understand it or not, we are always at risk of being shallowly formed. We are formed by our false selves our families of origin, the highly manipulated presentations of social media, and the value system of a world that determines worth based on accomplishments, possessions, efficiency, intellectual acumen, and gifts. So we need to be called regularly back to the essence of our lives in God. That essence is one of ongoing transformation. That is Christ being formed in us. And so here's the good news. Christ is present, but we need to be awakened to that. We have to stop, slow down, listen, and perhaps most of all, discern. That is contemplative prayer. Not prayer that moves God. It's prayer that seeks to change me. Contemplative prayer seeks to be formed. And all contemplative prayer is... It is received practices and pathways that focus our attention on God. And contemplative communities are places where, in the words of author Eugene Peterson, we interrupt our preoccupation with ourselves and attend to the presence of God. To do that, we're given rhythms, nothing complicated. The rhythms of scripture, prayer, sacrament, worship, service. In these ways, we cultivate an awareness of Christ in our lives, and Christ is everywhere. And in doing so, we begin to know what the kingdom looks like that we pray for. And when we know what it looks like, we can join it when we see it, and we can call it out and when we don't. So if you need a place to start, in the prayer email, just click on the graphic for our St. Mary's Prayer Liturgy. There's nothing fancy about it. In fact, there's nothing all that original about it. But it's a place to begin the slow and steady walk of healthy rhythms towards Christ in a community that I pray seeks to be contemplative. And all you have to do is just pray it through thoughtfully and carefully, along with our readings for the week, which are printed in the bulletin and on our website. But over time, we awaken to the power of Christ in us and in the world. And as we awaken to that, our lives begin to change. And when our lives begin to change, that is when change happens in the world, the change that we all want to see. To reiterate, contemplative prayer is at the core of everything we do. As we said yesterday, if Christ came from heaven to earth to save us, our job is similarly, in small places like this, to bring heaven to earth as well. And we do that first in prayer. And so I invite you into that work, particularly as the weather warms up and you can do a little bit more of that praying on your back porches, on vacation, wherever you go. It is a place of spiritual consequence. Make sure you take time to spend time with Christ and with his kingdom that is breaking into this world.
And in doing so, may you be filled with peace and good. Have a great week, y'all.